All right, welcome back to another episode of Fallout Cast. I am Jackson Jones, and we've got Christopher here. Hello, Christopher. Yo, what is up, Jackson? How are you tonight? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Man, I'm terrific, man. Ready to talk about some Fallout 4 once again this week? Yeah, man, we got some good topic ideas this week. We got survival mode to talk about, official mods. Uh, we got, you know, a little debate about achievements. And then uh, you were talking about being a trophy hunter uh, with the uh, platinum uh, trophy that you got. So figured we could definitely get in some uh, about that. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? First things first, we might as well just go into survival mode. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, your whole not being able to sleep or sleep save or whatnot? Like, what's all, what's all that about? All right. So, like, Todd Howard, you know, he's the guy, the head honcho uh, with Bethesda, um, you know, like the god of Fallout. <laughs> god Howard, yeah. God, god Howard, yeah, there you go. Um, so he did an interview, I believe it was with IGN, and he was talking about some of the – things that they were going to do within survival mode for fallout 4 and some of the changes that they were making uh things like bullets will now have like a weight amount to them um you know it'll vary by the caliber um, of the ammunition uh fusion cores have a uh, weight amount rockets mini nukes you know all these things are going to add weight whereas before they did not affect like you know your carry weight um then there were things like yeah you cannot sleep anymore or, excuse me you can sleep you cannot save anymore unless ah. you uh, sleep so you're going to have to have like a settlement with a bed. And then, you know, that's the only way you can save your game. There's no fast travel. So, you know, without fast travel, that means that you are definitely going to have to do all the little quests like Preston gives you to, like, you know, set up a new settlement or help the settlements and then set up like radio towers. And um, because if not, without fast travel, you're going to be walking all the way across the map. You know, if you only uh, say you've set up, you know, maybe the castle or sanctuary. But if you're like in... Um, uh, the glowing sea or something, you know, that's a long way to walk back to sanctuary. Um, you know, so you're going to have to start, you know, setting up settlements all over the map and uh, in order to, you know, save and just, I don't know. I just think it's a fascinating way to play Fallout 4 from what I've been used to for the last uh, few months. Um, it kind of reminds me, I guess, more along the lines of, I guess, like how New Vegas was um, uh, with some of the stuff. Um, so I don't, I don't know. That's just, I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow. Um there's some other changes that they made to it. Um, looking at the list real quick, uh, fatigue. Um, fatigue works like radiation, but it'll affect your like action points rather than your hit points. So the more fatigue you built up, the last action, the least amount of action points you'll have for other actions. So that's something that's different. Um, there's different diseases and stuff they have now. Um, eating uncooked meats and drinking uncurified water that'll increase like the damage that you take or the um, radiation damage and stuff. Um, you, know, you have like a compromised like immune system now, so that's a little bit different. Um, crippled limbs is another one. Uh, they will no longer like auto heal after combat, and you'll remain crippled until you um, get healed by a stem pack. Um, so that's something that's definitely different. Um, the enemy and loot re uh, repopulation. So like you know, once you go to somewhere and like you clean it out, sometimes if you go back, um, everyone's still dead inside the um, you know whatever little settlement that you uh, went into or building that you went into sometimes you'll go back and everyone's just dead but you will see like the loot and stuff will sometimes show up there again sometimes it won't now that will happen but um it'll do it at a much uh you know significantly slower rate than before so you know that's something else you're gonna have to like uh, keep in mind uh the bed types too is another big thing so the type of bed you're sleeping in that'll determine the uh, length of time you're able to like stay asleep so, you know, if you're like in a sleeping bag, you won't get that much time. But if you have that nice, big, white medical bed with the dirty sheets, like, you know, you might be able to stay in there a little bit longer. So, I mean, yeah, it's totally changing the way you play Fallout 4 in survival mode. And I just think that's pretty awesome or whatever. I mean, have you read anything about it or have any opinions about it? Oh, I read the link that you sent me. Um, my opinion on it, though, it sounds like it, um, Todd Howard or God Howard is really, really pushing to have us reach about 400 hours of gameplay with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's Survival really alone, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, no fast travel. All that sounds to me like okay. So he wants us. To, he wants it to hit the four hundred hour count. Um, not so much, you know, killing raiders and whatnot. But he just wants you to walk the whole way. <laughs> yeah. You can't have like fusion cores. Like on my, I think it's on my PS4. I have like a hundred and something fusion cores or whatever, and they're just always with me because I'm always in power armor. Now, if I'm yeah. be able to bring like one or two. Fusion cores, I probably won't stay in power armor because there's going to be nothing worse than like getting to a certain, you know, 
area on the map that's far away from a settlement and my fusion cores go dead, I'm definitely not going to walk back like really slow without the fusion core. And I can't just like fast travel back to Sanctuary to pick up a few more or to the exactly. or something to buy some more. Like, so, you know, you're definitely going to have to like um, strategically think how you play survival mode. And, uh, I don't know. It's either ammo or power armor on that one. Honestly, that's what that sounds like. Oh, another thing that's crazy, too, is on the compass. So you can no longer, um, the enemies no longer show up, like, on the little compass near the little red dot you'll see, like, on the compass. So enemies no longer show up there or whatever. So you're going to have to, like, keep your eyes open at all times or whatever. And the distance where, like, locations would normally appear, like, you'd see, you know, they wouldn't be whited out. They'd be kind of like the um, white outline on your uh, compass where you can see, oh, okay, I haven't discovered this place. So you go to it. Like, that's going to be, like, a really, really short so you're going to have to be, like, really, really close to it for it to show up. So, you know, if you're playing in survival mode for the first time, or if you're playing Fallout 4 for the first time in survival mode, man, it's going to – I don't know if I'd do that. Like, I would definitely recommend going to, like, a, you know, normal or <laughs> or something before jumping into survival mode. Like, uh, I'd go baby mode, honestly, on that one, if they had that. You know, that should be the next DLC, Fallout baby mode. For those just starting to play out Fallout, Fallout Baby Mode. Uh, come in here if this is your first time ever playing a Fallout game. Go ahead and try Baby Mode. We'll get you the fundamentals, then you can work your way up to regular mode. And then if you're really fine with that, you can go to all the way to survival mode. <laughs> yeah, also known as you're going to die. <laughs> also known as good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you have to start over. <laughs> if you're dead, that's a wrap. <laughs> or make it Dark Souls where you can't pause or save. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't have it where you couldn't save. Like, another thing that would have been cool is, like, if you're going to... Well, I guess that would kind of take away from the RPG element, but um, you know how, like, when you go into your Pip-Boy or something, to look in, like, you know, your you know, inventory or whatever, the game pauses? So what if you did that, but the game didn't pause? Like, if it was still attacking you, like... <laughs> you know, that would kind of suck. You're fighting a behemoth trying to pull out your freaking uh, Fat Man because you're only using your 10 millimeter, but the behemoth's still hitting you while you're in your Pip-Boy. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely we um I definitely will be going into God mode uh, in survival unless they remove that you know option. But I don't think they can do that on PC. But <laughs> well, not on PC. But if you're a console player like me, uh, you don't get the luxury of God mode. <laughs> yeah, well, you will soon, hopefully, when they have. Uh, hopefully, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to activate God mode, but uh, that would be kind of cool if you could. Um, well, speaking of mods or whatever, so they also announced uh, official mods. And I don't really know what that means versus like non-official mods, which, you know, on the PC, um, you know, we have like the Nexus mods is probably like the most popular place to get them. And I don't even know if there's any other place to get uh, PC mods for Fallout. Like I only know about Nexus mods. Um, now I'm not a big modder. I do use some of them. Like uh, if you look at one of my videos, I have dog meat. He's like a white wolf. Um, I have like some power armor mods that I use. Or I've got like digital camo, different colors. Like I run around right now with um, uh, red digital camo. Um, I have some of the body mods and stuff for my female character. Um, some of the hair body mods. mods for the female character. I see how it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I just do whatever. quotations around body mods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had to beef her up a little bit and you know add some hair to her, um, some like different ponytails and different hair designs or styles or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't really use like too many mods. I've played with some of them, like some of the uh, texture mods and stuff, like where you can like clean up a uh, sanctuary, uh, make it where it's like green grass and, you know, looks like what I would imagine a nuclear site would look like after 200 years, like where grass would start to grow again, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. Like, I, I don't know because <laughs> I don't think there's anything that's 260 years old right now that's uh, been affected by a nuclear um, maybe like what is that place in Russia like where the well, that was like in the 80s so. oh Chernobyl yeah. yeah yeah so that yeah right there that's only like 30 or 40 years old and it's well, yeah Chernobyl doesn't look all that bad yeah it doesn't look that bad um, doesn't look it definitely doesn't have like green grass and trees stuff you know green trees and green grass does um, or at least I don't think it does Mm, yeah, I've never been there, yeah, <laughs> nor, no. nor nor have I looked at any recent pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, me, me either. But. I saw in Call of Duty once, but uh, yeah, and that was about it. Yeah, that had like with the playground in it in Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, um, I don't know what the difference between official versus non-official. So, I tried looking to see some articles, maybe 
if they would explain the difference and what it meant. What I'm thinking is maybe these will just, you know, be like maybe either on the Bethesda website or something that you can install like in Steam, like in Fallout 4, like, um, you know, maybe they're just officially supported by um, Bethesda. So I don't know, you know, how that will differ, if they'll run any better, like on a PC or um, I'm su I suppose that maybe this will play into the console aspect of getting mods. Um, you know, my thinking is, you know, on the Xbox One and then later on the PlayStation 4, maybe you'll only be able to install like these official mods that are from the official, you know, Fallout store, Bethesda store or something. Um, I started thinking, you know what, maybe they're going to do kind of like a in-game purchase or something. Um, kind of like how they do like on consoles, you know, like the DLC or where you buy like, you know, like I said, Call of Duty, you can go in there and buy different, you know, guns or outfits and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So I didn't know maybe if that's how they plan on doing the mods. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've read anything about that or had any thought on it, but um, I just found it kind of interesting. Well, the difference between official versus non-official mods, and I haven't seen any articles on this either, but it wouldn't be like Bethesda to have us buy official mods and then stick us with the free, crappy, non-official mods. So what I think, honestly, because you were saying Nexus is the uh, place to get the mods, and um, I know that a little bit from my time on PC in New Vegas. Um, I think it'll be like how Twitter and Vine and uh, even YouTube, if you're a popular YouTuber or whatnot, you'll get a little check mark or like uh, something next to your name saying that you're verified. Um, so I think Bethesda will do something like that. They'll take um, whoever's do, be, putting out the best mods, you know, on Nexus or wherever else you can put out mods and with the creation kit and um, whatever, you know, is most popular, they'll put like a official mod title with it for whoever's doing it the best, because I don't think, because if Bethesda was going to release mods for the game, I think they would have done it already instead of focusing so heavily on the DLC. I think they're doing the whole mod creation kit for the consoles. Is That's their way of saying, we're not going to do mods. We're going to do DLCs. You guys have already shown that you guys are going to be great at putting out mods, so we might as well give you an outlet to do that um, for your console. Um, so I think that's the way they'll do it. Whoever's putting out the best mods, the mods that don't lag, the mods that actually are contributing to the gameplay, um, they'll go ahead and stamp those with an official stamp or Bethesda endorsed and, you know, send them out like that. At least as a console player, I, I hope they would do that instead of charge me for the official ones. That would suck. Yeah. And, you know. The funny thing about that, um, the most popular mods for, you know, I mean, any of the games, like, yeah, Fallout or Skyrim or something like that, almost all of them are always, like, nudity, uh, like, the, the female, like, big breast mods. Like, I mean, if you go look at Nexus mod for the top mods, almost every one of them, like, they're probably the top ten of them, it seems like are all, like, some type of, like, body mod or something like well, that. Well, I saw them, yeah, for New Vegas. The problem is my gaming PC or my it's not really a gaming PC, but the, my PC that can run New Vegas is my family computer. So that's why I don't have any top 10 mods on there. Um, I have the, <laughs> I have the God mode mod. And I think I have the one, uh, there's one of the mods where you can play in Oregon. Uh, it's uh, like a whole new chapter. I figured what it was, but I had that, or at least the beta version of it. And then, so it was like a new, uh, like a new map or a new quest. Or it? Yeah. It was basically just like a DLC. Okay. Awesome. Now I hope they do that for fallout four. Like, I hope there's some, you know, some modder out there who, you know, loves this, you know, Fallout 4 and, and does something like this later on to, you know, extend the life of uh, Fallout 4, um, which I imagine I'll be playing this for, you know, at least the next year and a half. Oh, yeah. Probably. Um... And the crazy part is with people making, like, landmass expansions like that and putting them to Nexus, I mean, they don't get paid for that. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're doing it either out of the kindness of their own heart or hoping that they'll get donations for it. I mean, like, I've never once downloaded a thing that didn't ask for donation, but I've never um, downloaded a mod that I had to pay for. So that's, like, crazy how, like, I, I never donated to a modder. I sure would like to, but I've never done it. Um, I'm just try trying to think, like, who does? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess there's somebody out there that donates. I mean, I've been playing PC games for, you know, 10 years or something like that now. And, you know, I used to be really heavily into Battlefield 2, and there were all kind of mods for it, like new map mods, and uh, there was one called, I think it was AIX or something. And, I mean, this thing had, like, 20 maps or something in it, all these different vehicles that you couldn't get, like, in the vanilla, you know, BF2 game. And uh, yeah, I never donated, but I, you know, sure as heck uh, 
was using the mods or whatever and playing on servers and everything with them. So yeah, it's crazy like that they, you know, there's someone that has enough time to put forth into like, you know, something like that where they're not getting paid for it. They're just doing it because they love the game. And I think that's what's so awesome about like the Fallout community because if you're playing on PC and you go to Nexus Mods and you look at the number of mods for you know, any of the Fallout games or any of the Skyrim games or anything like that, and then you compare them to the other games, to like The Witcher 3, which, you know, it's been out, I don't know, maybe like a year or close to a year. It's been out for quite a while now. But uh, in Fallout 4, has only been out, you know, since November. And you look at like, the, it's like four times as many mods for Fallout 4 yeah. for The Witcher 3. So I'm just saying like this, you know, Fallout is just, you know, an awesome franchise. But to have like so many people doing so many different things so that you can play the game the way you want to do it, you know, so you can enjoy it, you know, whatever makes it enjoyable for you. I think that's just awesome. Like the well, Fallout and Bethesda. Um, Todd Howard, I don't know if you've done a little background on him. I've watched a couple of little background videos and read some articles and some Wikipedia. Um, when he Before he worked for Bethesda, he actually pirated Bethesda's games, yeah. so he didn't pay for them, and then he went and modded them. And so he went into Bethesda having this idea and, you know, him pirating games and whatnot. So, I mean... I'm sure he's against piracy of his Fallout games. I mean, who wouldn't? Um, but I think he goes into each game that he makes, especially with Fallout, um, or not that he makes, that him and his team make, um, especially with Fallout, just going in, like, knowing that this is going to be a mod moddable game. Because, like, even Fallout 3, there's a ton of mods for it. <laughs> and, like, I, I remember when I had Fallout 3 for my console for my xbox 360 when i still have the xbox 360 i could download mods that were compatible with my console of course i had to have this like, whole conversion tool or whatnot but i could even do that and so i think todd howard makes his games or the team makes their games knowing that modding can happen and so they want to support that as much as they can so they make it as easy as possible to mod it for them and i think that's a really 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 key component um with like why Fallout has so many mods, because so they just make it easy to do. Yeah, and that's all. And like you were mentioning earlier, the creation kit or whatever, them putting out a tool like that, this is like, look, this is the game that we've created. Now here, you go make it even greater, or add things to it that we didn't have time to do, or that we just didn't think players would want. But you know, that, that's really awesome uh, the way Bethesda you know handles that. Um, and I think it's even. Um, more awesome that they're trying to bring that aspect to the console because I do play on the Xbox One, I do play on the PS4, I have both uh, consoles, and you know I do play on the PC. I just I happen to like the PC more, and the mods play a big part in that. You know, a, a reason why you know I like playing on PC because you know I can play it a little bit different than I can on my PS4 or you know on the Xbox One, and uh, I just think that's uh, you know uh, fantastic. Um, one thing I also want, also wanted to mention too. Um, while we're talking about like the survival mode stuff and the Todd Howard interview that he gave, and I'm pretty sure it was IGN, um, he mentioned that there was like a terminal somewhere in the game that no one has found yet, or maybe they found it, but it was like a Easter egg and no one's mentioned it here, or he hasn't seen it mentioned anywhere. So I didn't know if you've seen anything about that. I did see something about that actually. <laughs> where do you think it is? Like, where do you think? Uh, the terminal lives. Now, I was thinking it has to be somewhere like by the glowing sea or somewhere like in an area like that. Um, I have no idea. Um, I think this will be like the Jar Jar Binks thing with Star Star Wars, where it was a while after the prequels came out that people started to catch on that maybe Jar Jar's um, a Sith. And uh, even George Lucas, while he was, you know, he, he did the whole behind the scenes thing, like, oh yeah, Jar Jar, he's the key to all of this. And that went through, like, went over everybody's head, like, oh, there's no way he's a Sith. Oh, wait, he's a Sith. Okay. And so now you all have these, like, film theories, like, oh, this is why Jar Jar's a Sith. Like, oh, yeah, okay. And so now we, we're pretty certain of it. And this is however many years later. I have a feeling this is going to be just like that with um, this game. No one's going to find it for however long. <laughs> um, no one would have found it or would even even thought to find it if Todd hadn't said anything about it. And if someone would have found it, if Todd hadn't said anything about it, they wouldn't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, next thing. Do you read all the terminals? Like when you go into like an area? No, like, yeah, never. <laughs> you know what I do? But I think after like a hundred terminals or so, you know, eventually I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, I've seen the one that had like all the GI Joe names. I don't remember what it was like vault 95, I think, or I don't remember what it was, but there's like, um, terminal that has all the players names or like from gi joe where it was like i don't 
Uh, That's funny. Yeah, I don't remember. You know, it's somewhere. I'm gonna have to find it, like put it in the show notes, or maybe we can come back to that like uh, next week or whatever, like a follow up, like which uh, place that is, because I know I talked to you about it before on Tumblr. Like I put a link to it with a screenshot. But um, you know, little things like that. But I eventually got bored of like reading all the little backstories to every exactly character because there's so many of them. Like there, I mean, there's, there's got to be 500 different terminals in Fallout 4. And you know, there's just like 10 or so story writers just sitting up with us, like, okay, what would be funny to put in a vault? Okay, here, write that down. Write that down. All right, you're gonna code that in there. Perfect. <laughs> And like me as a player playing Fallout 3 New Vegas and 4, I'm just so conditioned when I go to terminals. Okay, here's what I want. I, want, I need to unlock this door. Boom, 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 boom. Unlock door. Da, 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 whatever. Oh, I need a code. Okay, find the code. And so like I don't – like I'm at a point where like I don't see the backstory when it's right in front of me. I'm only looking for what is going to get me farther in the game. And so I don't ha- – so how can I spend the minimum time in the terminal and maximum time getting that door open or whatever else? And so I think I'm conditioned to just not see the whole backstory stuff. And like, let's say I, let's say I had found the terminal. There's no way I'd know because I would have not even paid attention to anything that was going on. And I bet you that that's happened. Like someone going through, uh, got to unlock this door. Okay. There it is. Missed the entire, whatever Easter egg it was. And to this day, I don't even know that they've done it. Yeah. Now there's one terminal like, um, that I've, I've been pinpointing to wonder, hey, maybe it's something to do with this. So, have you done the um, Conrad Kellogg mission? Like, I, mean, I guess, I'm assuming you've already done that. Like, the, you know, he's the guy that, like, kills your husband or wife and takes baby Sean. Um, have you done the mission, like, where you have to finally meet him yet? I don't know how far along you are in the game. but um, Yeah, it's weird. I actually just got into Vault 111, so I haven't played um, past that. You just got to Vault 111? Yeah, I just got lowered in. Oh, come on. <laughs> Definitely joking. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you me confused. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, Vault 111, you just got lowered in. I'm like, Maybe he means Vault 81 or yeah, whatever. Vault 80, <laughs> Maybe he means Vault 101, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I've done the Kellogg mission, and I uh, – Okay, yeah. so we, before you enter the room where Kellogg is, there's like some – I don't remember. There's like a little hallway or something. And like he opens the door for you, but – uh, if you are facing the door that you walk in, if you turn around and the door is to your back, you go to the left and there's some like little um, bunks or something in there. There's like some little uh, barracks or whatever with some bunks. So there's a terminal in one of the rooms. I think you have to walk down, take a left, and then it's like the first or second room on the left uh, down the hallway um, if you leave the area where Kellogg is. Now there's a terminal in there and you get to it and it's like running, but you never, it never does anything. You just sit there at it, and it's like, okay, access this, and then it's like it just keeps ticking. Now, I've tried it on the Xbox, the PS4, and the PC. It does the same thing on all three platforms. The only reason I mentioned that, because the first time I did it on the PS4, I thought it was like a glitch or like a, you know, like a game-breaking bug. I was like, you know, I was like, wow, I can't get to whatever is on this terminal. And it doesn't tell you that something's wrong. It just keeps running. Like, it never does anything. I've even brought Nick Valentine with me. I'm like, hey, can you hack that computer? And he'll just sit there. Like, you can leave him there for 30 minutes, and he just sits there typing away. Like, you know, talking as he types or whatever. And uh, he never unlocks it or whatever. But you can actually get into it. It's not, like, locked with a password. It's just, like, you can't get past whatever it's telling you on the terminal, which I don't remember, you know, off the top of my head. But I'm kind of like, dang. Maybe I need to bring, like, someone with me to hack this. And I started thinking, like, okay, who in the railroad? You can't bring Tinker Tom with you. Um, you could bring Deacon, but, you know, he's not, like, the hacker. That's uh, Valentine's, the one that does all the uh, hacking. So I'm like, what other, you know, what other companion could I bring that could maybe, like, get through that? And I haven't went back to do it yet, but I was just like, man, it has to be something with this terminal because it's just weird that it just, you know, there's nothing to it, like, it's telling you you can read something and it never loads whatever the content is. So yeah. I don't, you know, I mean, that's just an idea. You know, if you're listening, go definitely check that terminal out. Um, where, where is Kellogg at? Where do you uh, find him at? I know you do the little thing with dog meat where he leads you to it, but I don't remember what building that was in. It's so, I think it's like Green Tech. Um, is it Green Tech? No, I think Green Tech is where you uh, meet the courser the first time. Yeah, okay, yeah. Green Tech is where you meet the courser. Um, it starts with an H uh, where you find Kellogg. It's a military base. 
um, for sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it is the military base. Um, it's for, it starts with an H. Oh, man. I don't know. But anyway, whatever that place is, you know, we'll link to it. Um, definitely go check that out, though. And uh, maybe, you know, someone smarter than me can um, figure out how to get into it. Well, I haven't checked that out yet. I might do it and say I come up with some results. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I haven't brought all my companions back, but I was just trying to think, like, who can get into a terminal other than Valentine? Like, who else is like uh, like a hacker like that or has the uh, ability to hack? Um, you know, I know Kate can't do it. Um, definitely not Preston or Dogmeat or. And that's why Kate is my least favorite companion. She doesn't do anything. Yeah, but she likes it when you do bad stuff, or like when you, like when you drink or you know take jet. <laughs> oh, she likes it when I play Fallout. Great. <laughs> I want someone that gets pissed at me when I play Fallout. <laughs> or bring Strong with you. He doesn't like anything. <laughs> or bring Piper. Uh, yeah, you really shouldn't be using that buff out. Shut up, Piper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go talk to Nat. <laughs> I don't need you here. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite companion? While we're talking about companions. My favorite companion is Piper just because of that. Yeah. <laughs> she likes to start stuff with my character. <laughs> She'll all of a sudden get into conversation like, oh, hey, what's up, Blue? Hey, listen, here's about my backstory. Like, awesome, Piper. Guess who didn't ask about this? Me. <laughs> so, and I actually have a cool tip about Piper. that uh, That'll be like my tip of the week. We will get uh, into that. But before that, um, I had a few little, it's like a follow-up for Automatron. And the achievements, you can actually find them on Steam. Oh, yeah, the achievements. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have a little debate about this here. So with Automatron, there's five new achievements or trophies, depending on you know, which platform you are playing on. There is Headhunter, Mechanical Menace, the most toys, which you can actually get that by building 10 robot mods. There is Restore and Order, and there is Robot Hunter. And you can unlock that with 10 robot mods. The other three are all... Um, quest or whatever, uh, head hunting, mechanical menace, and the stone order are the quest that you will uh, have to finish in order to get the uh, achievement or trophy. So you say you don't care about achievements, that you don't ever try for them, you just, whatever, it's just nothing, not a big deal for you, but that I'm kind of like on the other end of the spectrum. Like I actually enjoy going, you know, after them just for the challenge, not really to like showcase them. Hey, look what I got. I got all 50 achievements on the PS4, which actually... Um, I do have platinum on the PS4. It is my only platinum trophy on the PS4. So I have all 51 Fallout. Uh, it's 50 achievements plus the one platinum or whatever. So you actually get like 51. But uh, why is it that you don't care for them other than just, you know, what is your deal with that? Well, I had a different um, opinion on the 360 because it was pretty easy to find the achievements on the 360. You were just to go to the big button and then scroll over to achievements, and it would show you the achievements. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was fun um, because, let's say I had finished the game and I did start, you know, trophy hunting or achievement hunting or whatever you'd call it for your Xbox. Um, I get, get to find the ones that I'm pretty sure I could do and then go do them. Um, and that wasn't stuff I spent time doing, but if I was super bored but I still wanted to play Fallout, I'd do some of that sometimes. Um, but one of the things that keeps me from wanting to go hunt achievements on the Xbox One is I don't know where to go. Um, I'm not, I'm not like saying I'm an expert on the Xbox one or anything, but I know my way around it, but I don't know where to find my achievements unless I get an achievements. I can say Xbox open that. Um, but other than that, I don't know where to go. So it's not like worth it for me to go find them. If I can't like look back and like, remember how I got the, uh, this achievement or how hard it was for me to work for it. And another thing is like, I think achievements are more for multiplayer games. Um, like Call of Duty, Halo Reach, or Halo Reach, Halo 5, whatever it is now. Halo Reach is my favorite. Um, and to get those achievements, so when other people go and hover over your gamer card, they can see, like, oh, dude, this guy got this many achievements. Because those achievements are supposed to be hard to get. You need to be, like, super good to get them. And so other players, when they play, can be like, oh, don't mess with this guy because he's got all these achievements. But with Fallout, I just think, um, you know, achievement hunting or trophy hunting just takes away from the storyline and like the passion for fallout because if you get all your you know energy focused into getting achievements and like getting however many kills or doing however many this or romancing all your companions it's like and i don't even know the achievements for fallout 4 because i just haven't looked um it, i just think it takes away from 
like the passion of the game is playing it just to play it, playing it just to see what happens or going and choosing the Institute or choosing the Minutemen or choosing the Brotherhood and like focusing with them. I think it takes away from all that once you get, you know, and I'm not saying like getting achievements in Fallout is a bad thing. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying if you go and you just focus on the achievements, even after you've done a playthrough, I just think like it takes away from the cool stuff you can see in the background or like the cool Easter eggs that you'd have to get if you're like really paying attention to what was going on. Um, so just, yeah, personally, I don't care for achievements. I'm not judging anyone who does. That's your type of gameplay. I get it. Um, but I personally don't waste my time with achievements or trying to find them out. Yeah, one of the things that I was most disappointed with with Fallout, as far as um, getting the trophies on the PS4, is there was like only one gold trophy, or maybe two. I think it was one. One gold, one gold trophy, and then obviously the platinum one, which I was like, wow. And some of these were hard, like the benevolent leader. Like where you have to get like 100, you know, happiness like in a settlement. I think that's like a bronze trophy, and that is like the absolute hardest trophy to get like in Fallout 4. Um, I, I just like it's just like crazy like trying to get like the 100 happiness. Like it just took me like four hours to go from I think it was like 92 or 94 happiness to the 100. Like, have you played Fallout Shelter? Yes, I have. It's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I cannot get my freaking dwellers happy in fallout shelter <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter what you do like uh you know what i played fallout shelter and i kind of just gave up on it because i was just like man it was like every time i launched the game it was like death claw attack all your food and everything's gone so i was just like delete like I, <laughs> I, I, played it though. I did play it for about a month but um you know for for me the achievements is just something fun to do um, as I mentioned, I only have one platinum trophy on PS4, and that was Fallout 4. Um, I'm at about 60% or so on the Xbox. And where do you see your achievements at? I believe it's on your uh, profile or your games list. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I know you, you can see them on there. Um, I don't think it's as simple. I don't like the, the layout of the Xbox One. Like, I don't like it either. It was like a Windows 8, you know, the tiles and everything. Like, okay, get me back to Windows 7 where I can see where my crap is. Yeah. I just, for me, like I don't, I don't use my Xbox or my PlayStation for anything other than games, um, movies, music, you know, stuff like that. I don't care for it. I don't want it on there. I just you show me all the games in the store, and yeah, it is, the Xbox I find to be very confusing. Um, as someone who uses the Xbox as like a secondary console, where the only thing that I use the Xbox for are things like Halo or um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Gears of War. Oh man, I love Gears of War. Yeah, so I use my Xbox for those things. For everything else, it's on the PS4. And um, yeah, I just have more friends that play the, with the PS4. So you know, I don't really have like a preference over you know one console being better than the other. But um, yeah. I think console Wars, baby. Yeah, yeah. Xbox sucks. Uh, oh man, you play PS4? Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates is my hero. <laughs> yeah, PC Master Race. <laughs> no but you know for as far as the achievements go yeah i, I agree like it's just a, a something to showcase to your friends or whatever and i think it, yeah if, if you're just focusing on that yeah we'll take away from the game and you know we won't enjoy, i mean i don't know i th also think that on the flip side of it if you've completed the main quest i think going after the achievements will extend the life of the game because then you have something to actually try to do in the game you know hey i want to find all 20 bobbleheads so if you want to do that anyway, you're going to do it. But then you're also going to get this achievement a trophy for it. So, you know, I just think it's kind of something fun to do. Um, and, you know, people, I know people that are like go crazy over, oh, I've got, you know, 50, 55 games. I've got platinum trophies in them or, you know, i got all the achievements to them. And I'm awesome. You know, I'm level 85 in Xbox Live or whatever. Like, I don't get into it like that. I just do it like, you know, for the fun aspect of the game or whatever. Just something to say, hey, I actually did this. I love this game. And. I've done everything in it, and here's the proof to it. Um, look at me, look at me. I got the platinum, and um, so I don't know. Oh yeah, dude, I got platinum in one of my Call of Duty games. I'm like the greatest player ever. Oh yeah, cool, bud. Tell me how that girlfriend's going. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. bud. <laughs> I want to mention the fact that I have uh, over 500 hours in Fallout 4 between the three platforms. I don't have close to that. I don't understand how you have that time. <laughs> I, I have no idea. You know what? When it first came out, I man, I was like addicted to it for the first like three or four weeks. I mean, I was putting in like six, seven, eight hours a day. Like, you know, I would come home from work and then I would just plop down on my couch and, you know, get to, and I actually started 
off playing Fallout 4 on the Xbox One, um, even before the PS4 or the PC. You know, I bought it. You know, I went and waited in line at GameStop at midnight or whatever. You know, got the I did that too. Version. Yeah, I actually brought my prop caps. I had made like a surplus of them, and they're just taking space up on my little Fallout shrine shelf. Yeah. And so I brought like a ton of Manuka Cola caps. So I was like, "Hey guys, so listen, I don't want to go home with these, so I'm just gonna set them here. They're yours." And it took them like a second to be like, "What is he talking about?" And once they realized there were caps, like he had like all the nerds and games. So I'm like, "Oh, dude, I want one. Oh, I got a Sunset Sarsaparilla one. Dude, that's cool. I got a Quantum one. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay, guys." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I wish I could have got some free caps. I did actually get a um. The pack south uh, loot crate package. So I had a friend Tanya, um, her and some of her friends. They have like a website where they write about gaming and stuff. And uh, they actually went there like as media guests. And um, she actually picked one up for me. I thought that was really awesome or whatever. So you know, I want to send a shout out to her for that. But uh, I got like a pack south bobblehead. Some it's the loot crate version. But uh, that's like, awesome. Like, pack south exclusive or whatever. But it was like a bag in there, like a vinyl bag that actually when you fold the bag up it folds into like this little zip pouch that's in the shape of like a nuka cola cap so you know that's pretty cool or whatever and, and there was like a t-shirt and um, a couple patches and i want to be friends with your friends <laughs> yeah yeah me too i want to be friends with them and but well, they keep sending me cool stuff like that <laughs> that's awesome yeah so i thought it was pretty cool you know something to add to my collection um i know i think i showed you what a picture from instagram all of my Fallout goodies, you know, from Fallout 3. I don't have mm -hmm. any New Vegas stuff, though, like, um, as far as, like, bobbleheads or, you know, figurines or shirts or anything. Um, everything I have is, you know, three or four. And um, I know there are some of the little figures for New Vegas, and I haven't really went on Amazon or eBay or somewhere looking for them, but uh, something that I want to do to add to my collection because uh, I do get into collecting the uh, Fallout memorabilia and stuff. Well, that's funny because mo I was thinking about that the other day, how like most of my stuff is Fallout New Vegas stuff. The only stuff that isn't Fallout New Vegas specific is um, my Wasteland Survival Guide that I have, um, my Vault or my Fallout Pop figures. I have the Vault Boy and the Feral Ghoul. And hey, the Vault Boy after Fallout 4 came, or the weeks leading up to Fallout 4 coming out, and um, the months afterwards, getting a Vault Boy Pop vinyl figure was like the hardest thing. Like, it would be easier for me to go buy black tar freaking heroin than it was to be that by that um, vault boy. And given I live in a very, very, very safe community that doesn't really, you know, specialize in black tar heroin. But I'm pretty sure I could find it here easier than I could find one of these figures. So my parents finally hunted one down for my birthday. I don't know how they got it. And I don't know how much I spent on it. But they got it for me for my birthday, which they're originally going to get it for me for Christmas. But they couldn't freaking find it. <laughs> and so, like... Oh man, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying that's okay, that's another Fallout non or non New Vegas specific item. Another non uh, New Vegas specific items are my two Nuka Cola bottles, my Nuka Cola and my Quantum that I got from Target, and then my round of BBs, my caps that I've made, and my Rataway. Everything else is Fallout New Vegas specific. So both my Pit Boys that I've made, one of them is just a regular Pit Boy that I saw. Like, it was my Pit Boy from New Vegas. I mean, I guess that could be from 3, too. But I've also got my Pimp Boy 3 Billion, which is New Vegas-specific. Um, I've got Sunset Sarsaparilla Caps, also New Vegas-specific. And my biggest New Vegas-specific is my new California Republic flag. And that thing is sweet. I didn't even know they sold them. Again, my parents got that for me. I was like, where did you even find this? I've been looking for one of these forever. And they got it. It's the white with the bear with the two heads, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the regular California flag with two heads, and it says new in front of it. Yeah, that's awesome or whatever. Yeah, I, I would love to grab one of those too, like, uh, you know, just something to hang in my little gaming uh, man cave that I have here at my uh, condo, where it's just like you walk in there and it's like, oh, it's like a video game porn or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, my, my girlfriend, you know, she hates it. Like, you know, she'll call me or text me and I don't answer. She's like, I know what he's doing. <laughs> it is ensuing like uh, he's not cheating he's playing video games yeah that's the good thing like i, I am loyal <laughs> <laughs> so all right so we'll wrap it up so i have a tip right here uh so this would be like our tip of the week that we're gonna do every weekend and this tip right here um i don't know it's not really like a tip it's just something you can do in game that i think is pretty cool so once you get like a hundred percent um companionship or whatever a romance like your npc your non-playable character to um to you know maximum happiness um 
you know, where it's like, oh, you've reached maximum happiness with Piper. Um, I'm, you know, with my. <laughs> I've reached maximum happiness with Piper. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, Piper's probably my favorite NPC. But uh, so when you um, reach maximum happiness with it, bring Piper, whoever it is. You can bring Valentine, or I don't think. Uh, obviously, dog meat will not work for this. Um, I don't think Cod's work does either. But I know, like all the you know human type, uh, either whether they're synth or um, uh, you know, because like Colin and Dance is a synth or whatever. Uh, spoiler alert! Look. Oh man, you should have started with spoiler alert. <laughs> when I found that out, I flipped out. <laughs> but you bring them back to Vault One Eleven and take hold them. up, hold up! You just ruined the game <laughs> for whoever hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> They're listening like, oh, hold up. They're like, listen, oh, this would be great. He is what now? Oh, no. <laughs> we'll get like death threats like on YouTube yep. or whatever. No. Okay, but look. So t- go back Everybody to Vault. told me that. <laughs> <laughs> go back to Vault 111. Bring your companion there. And go back into the little um, isobaric chamber or whatever it's called that uh, where you were like frozen inside the vault and where your wife is like still frozen. Like, for whatever reason, like she hasn't thawed out, like even though you've left the door open, that like, drives me insane. <laughs> okay, thaw her out, like have her turn to a skeleton, something like fall out you know. through the fallout and melt that freaking ice. <laughs> yeah, so you know she's still frozen, but anyway, so like when you bring your companion there, they will have something to say about the wife, like especially like if you're a male character and you have Piper, like I forget what it is. I actually have a YouTube video on it. I will find it and try to link it in the description if I can find it because I have like. 400 videos about fallout on youtube but uh pretty sure it shouldn't be too hard to find but anyway you go in there and she'll have something like she's like oh so this is the wife or whatever it's uh, fancy to meet you or you know she'll have something to say like that then she'll break into the hey i'm really sorry you know whatever she'll go into this little spiel about like her family and how she feels bad for you and all this stuff or whatever so nothing about bringing up how she's getting the sloppy seconds or anything no nothing about that <laughs> one thing i've done with piper though like if i put i put my wife's wedding ring on her like i'm real savage like that like i put the put my wife my dead wife's wedding ring on piper my love and then i bring her back to meet like the dead wife whose ring she's wearing like it's some real savage type stuff or whatever well, you want to be twice as savage, bring Dance, Valentine, or Deacon, do that same thing, but be a male character. So, like, bring it back. Like, hey, our marriage is great. I like men now. <laughs> this know, is what you did. <laughs> he's wearing your ring. Yep. You die on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. Yeah, but you can do that with all of them. It doesn't have to be, like, male, female. So when you bring back uh, Deacon or um, McCready, whatever, they'll all have something to say to you, like, um, along the lines of, you know, each one of them has a different saying or whatever, but it's just something fun to do. And, um, you know, just something, you know, as a tip or, you know, whatever, something different in the game that maybe most people didn't think about doing, you know, go ahead and do that one time. If you bring dog meat back, you can actually have him get the cry later. Um, yeah. I don't know if they've patched that yet. Oh yeah. You know what? I think they did. I believe they did on that one. Time. Regardless, you can uninstall patches. Yeah. So well, you can do that. Yep. There you go. And, uh, Anyway, but uh, if you bring dog meat, yeah, I don't think he says anything <laughs> as far as uh, unless there's like a talking mod or something, you know, that would be awesome for dog meat. Um, talking mod, you know how hard it is to get like to voice a mod. It's pretty hard, like with DLCs and whatnot, and they have to hire voice actors and stuff to do the you know voices and whatnot. And, you know, the people who play uh, the main two characters, you know, they're still working today with those DLCs and stuff. And so that's kind of weird to think about. Like, I was telling you about that mod I got with that mod that you play in, like, Oregon. That was fully voiced. Yeah. And there were a lot of lines. So just, I don't know, this doesn't really have anything to do with what we were talking about. But if you're listening and you're playing a mod and it is fully voiced, go donate to that developer of that mod because that is a lot of time and effort. <laughs> To have that thing voiced. Yeah, I can imagine. Ugh. Like, I think a voiceover, I, I think being a voiceover actor, like, if I had, like, a dream job or something, definitely a voiceover actor for a video game, I think would be, I don't know, I'll say, like, a dream job, but I think it would be something, like, really cool to, like, say, hey, I'm a voiceover actor for, like, my favorite game, whether it's, you know, Mass Effect or Fallout or Halo or Metal Gear or whatever it is. Like, I just think that would be, like, uh, something cool to, you know, put on the resume or whatever as a personal achievement. Um, you know, not as something like as a career, but even as a career, I think that would be really cool. Or even cartoons, like imagine if you were like a regular, like on Family Guy or 
yeah you know simpsons or just you know any like you know massively popular like cartoon sitcom you know television show like that i think that's really cool but um all right so we'll wrap it up here and you can find me on twitter at icrizo you can also find me on tumblr at icrizo.net and uh jackson you want to go ahead and tell everyone where they can find you at yeah, because I like to you know self promote myself seemingly twice as much as you do. I'm just gonna go ahead and say these three following um, platforms are at news underscore fallout. So or, there's, I think it's the two following platforms. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at news underscore fallout. You can find me on Skype. You can find me on Tumblr. You can find me on Snapchat at fallout news one word. And then on YouTube, um, if you're watching this podcast on either of our YouTubes, we should probably be linking each other, so it shouldn't be hard to find us there. I still cannot figure out how to get my YouTube link to say youtube.com slash fallout news. I have to figure that out. It's like a certain amount of subscribers I have to have. Like, you know, it's driving me nuts. Yeah, I'm, I can tell you how to do it when we get out there. I'll, I'll uh, show you how to do it. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have brought that up now, but hey, if you're listening, <laughs> Christopher knows how to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be the tip for next week. How to, how to customize URL for YouTube. Next week on YouTube Cast. Oh, and you could also find us at falloutcast.com. That's so we're right. We're going to start uploading the audio version of this podcast. So if you want to listen to it on the go, like in your favorite podcast app, whether it's on iPhone or Android, you should be able to find that. So hopefully we'll have this up within the week. So if you're listening to this tomorrow or you know the, uh, the 1st of March 2016, might not be ready yet, but should be ready within a week. Uh, hopefully we have everything up and running by then. But uh, thanks for listening or watching if you're on YouTube. And I hope you have a great day.